Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected student. Today I am going to discuss uh, addition reactions of alkenes and alkynes. And uh, this lecture consists of two parts part A, which will be covered now, and part B will be covered in the next video lecture. The part A consists of uh, uh, eight section starting from addition reaction of alkenes to the stereochemistry of hydroboration, while part B consists of electrophilic addition of bromine and chlorine up to the oxidative cleavage of alkynes. Let's begin with part A. Uh, dear student, if you see the structure of alkene, it is basically, uh, and, we, and when we are discussing the addition reaction, it is just addition of an unsymmetrical reagent across the double bond of the alkene. And uh, we know that in alkenes, uh, one bond is a pi bond and other bond is sigma bond. And during reaction or during addition reaction, this pi bond is being broken. While you can see the structure of the unsymmetrical reagent, which is uh, composed of uh, the electrophile and the nucleophile, or we can say the positive and negative part. During addition reaction, this sigma bond between these two species is also being broken and ultimately we have basically a uh, addition product uh, uh, in which uh, two new sigma bonds are being formed. If you uh, look at the structure of alkene in uh, a pi bond is basically uh, um, bonds that are formed from the overlapping of the p orbital and the pi electron clouds are above and below the plane of the double bond, just like in this way. <clears throat> and we know that a pi bond, whether it is alkene or whether it is alkyne, they are electron seeking, or we can say they serve as a nucleophile, or they actually, you know, uh, add a common electrophile like H plus or X plus across the double bond. Here, a very uh, little or brief mechanism. For example, in this case, we can see that the pi electron of an alkene they are serving or attacking uh, as on, on the electrophile, and this electrophile is being added uh, at one of the carbon of this alkene to give it this intermediate and generating a carbocation. And in the next step, this uh, the leaving group, which is a nucleophile, is attacking on the empty orbital of the sp2 hybridized carbocation to, to give you this addition product. Okay, and now the electrophilic addition of uh, hydro, hydrogen halide to alkenes should be discussed here. And we will discuss the mechanism and the marking of rule. Uh, okay, now student, you can see here, uh, it is just like uh, the addition of the unsymmetrical reagents uh, across the double bond to generate in the carbocation in the first step and the nucleophilic addition on the carbocation to give this one. This is the common reaction we have already discussed in the previous slide. So what is the resemblance of this reaction with the Marconi re 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 reaction? You can see here in the next slide. Sometimes Sometimes this uh, addition reaction do not goes through the free carbocation and it, it goes via basically a transition state. How? Uh, let's see or uh, let's discuss the Marconi curve rule for the symmetrical subset first. There is no problem in the region chemistry. For example, consider this alkene, which is uh, the symmetrical alkene and we can add the electrophile on any carbon to give you this carbocation, whether this carbocation and this carbocation both are same, and then the nucleophile can be added on the, the carbocation to give you this addition product. Now, what happened when we have the unsymmetrical substrate? Two regio isomers are possible. You can see here this is a prop one in, and in this case, uh, the pi electron when attack at the electrophile and the electrophile being added at one of the carbon, there are two possibilities. 
one giving the uh, one degree carbocation in this case and the other intermediate giving this secondary carbocation and we know that the the primary carbocation is less stable because of the hyperconjugation uh, over the secondary carbocation now the nucleophile if attack on this carbocation will give you the major yield this is basically explained by the marconi cop rule that in electrophilic addition of an electrophile across an unsymmetrical alkene the more highly substituted and more stabilized carbocation is formed as the intermediate in preference to the less highly substituted and less stable one okay now see some more example this is uh, uh, the structure of the you know unsymmetrical reagent which is uh, attacked by the uh, pi electron and this electrophile is being added to give you this carbocation and later you can see here there are two possibilities uh, the formation of the three degree carbocation in this case or the one degree carbocation and we know that the three degree carbocation is more stable so the nucleophile uh, is, will be uh, will be attacking over the highly substituted carbocation rather than the less substituted carbocation and it was explained by the marconi cop rule so let's discuss of some more example that or uh, in, uh, in another way that addition of hcl hbr and hi across the double bond in this case the hydrogen from these reagent is the electrophile and the the halide is basically the nucleophile in case of the specific example of the addition of hbr towards this unsymmetrical alkene the h will add to give you the most stable carbocation or we can say the electrophile will add where we have the most stable carbocation and this step is the slow and the way determining step later the bromide ion attack at the nucleophile to give you the, this product not this one is a more theoretical explanation of the marconi cop rule that the hydrogen from the hydrogen halide will be added where we have more hydrogen to give you the highly substituted carbocation okay or we can say we can use one analogy that the carbocation which is um, rich in hydrogen will get richer to give you the most stable carbocation and in the next step see some more example that this is propene just hbr is adding to give you one degree carbocation and as well as the two degree carbocation so two degree carbocation have the preference over the one degree carbocation and then the nucleophile which is in this case the bromide ion will attack on the carbocation to give you this major product more example here we have two methyl propene in which the hcl is being added we have the two isomer one formed with the most stable carbocation and other in the less stable carbocation so the major yield will be of the most stable carbocation formed product in the second example we have a cyclo pentene uh, derivative of methyl derivative in which the hbr is being added to give you two product in which one will be the major because of the marconi cop addition and the other will be the minor uh, let's change the scenario of the marconi cop addition you can see here if we have the ionic addition towards the unsymmetrical reagent or uh, the positive portion of uh, the reagent will be added itself where the carbon atom of the double bond to give you more stable carbocation as an intermediate for example here in this case we can see here that this is one of the unsymmetrical reagent having the the positive charge on the chlorine by the negative charge on the hydroxy group it is the hypochlorous acid now the 
reaction shows that the pi bond will attack on the chlorine uh, chloronium ion to give you this intermediate which is the most stable the three degree carbocation and the chlorine will add at this carbon while in an other way if chlorine is being added at this carbon we have the one degree carbocation which is less stable in the next case the hydroxide ion will attack on this carbocation to give you ultimately this major product another example we can see here we have a cyclohexane cyclo hexyl derivative in which we have a double bond uh, on the exit position the iodo chloride and in this case this is uh, the unsymmetrical region uh, iodine is serving as an electrophile uh, while chlorine is serving as a nucleophile that iodine will be added to the double bond in such a way to give you the the more substituted carbon and with iodine will be added at this carbon by this way, this carbon will become the three degree carbocation ion. While the the in the other case, if iodine is being added at this carbon, we have the one degree carbocation which is less stable. In the next case, the chloride ion, which is uh, uh, a living group, will act as a nucleophile to give you this mega product. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's discuss the reduce-selective reaction. Uh, these reactions are those in which uh, one product formed predominantly over the other one. And we know that the, the Markovnikov reaction is basically a regio uh, selective reaction. See, for example, here the same case, we have a, a two methyl prop one in, in, in which the HCl is being added. And we have these two isomers in which one is the major one and one is the minor one. So these both are basically the regio isomer in which the one isomer is formed predominantly over the other one. We have one exceptions to the Markovnikov rule. If we use a peroxide instead of uh, uh, basically uh, as, an, as, a, as a catalyst, we have the anti markovnikov product and this is also known as the peroxide effect as well it is because this reaction proceed via the free radical mechanism and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, this reaction is only occur in presence of the hbr hi hcl and hf do not give this reaction it is because of the selectivity of the bromine Okay, uh, let's uh, discuss the stereochemical outcome of this ionic addition to an alkene. What happened when we have a, a molecule or the alkene which is uh, somehow the prochiral and we add the unsymmetrical hydrogen halide, we have this basically uh, uh, the, the carbocation which is basically tried on the planar. Now there are two chances for a nucleophile to attack from above the plane or below the plane to give you a chiral molecule but because of the equal chances of the s and r uh, if a molecule is be is going to be a chiral or uh, and both isomer are possible then in case we have the 50 50 percentage of both isomer and this type of the isomer are known as the racemate mixture and the process or the compound they are known as the racemate Let's discuss the addition of water to alkene and uh, first discuss the acid catalyzed hydration. The overall process of hydrogen and the hydroxyl group across a double bond is basically, uh, you know, you can see the structure, the H in water is serve as the electrophile while OH serve as a nucleophile and it follows the marconic of addition as well. For example, once we have the unsymmetrical reagent, the H will add it where we have the more hydrogen, while the OH will be added where we have the less hydrogen. And uh, this reaction is basically catalyzed in presence of the small amount of the strong acid. Let's let discuss the mechanism of this reaction. The first step is basically the protonation uh, of uh, the strong acid get uh, deprotonated by the alkenes to give you this protonated alkene and the formation of the carbocation. 
And uh, of course, because of the Markovnikov uh, rule, the carbocation formed will be more stable. Next step, the water molecule serves as a nucleophile on the uh, formed carbocation to give this oxonium ion, while uh, and in the, the uh, later the next water molecule will capture this proton from the oxonium ion to regenerate the acid and give you the corresponding alcohol, which is very fast. Uh, the limitation of this uh, acid catalyzed hydration towards alkene is basically it contains sometimes the rearrangement. And uh, ultimately, if we have alkene and carbon uh, carbon double bond adjacent, they have some alkyl group, it will def definitely rearrange to give you the highly substituted alkene. Let's see in this example. We know that. The first step is the protonation, and of course, it follows the Marconic of addition. And this is CH and this is CH2. The proton from the water molecule will be added at this carbon to give you this carbocation. But see the structure. This carbocation is secondary carbocation. What happened in this case? One of the alkyl group will be migrated from one carbon to the second carbon. This is also known as one to alkyl shift to give you this intermediate. What happened in this case, once this alkyl group is being migrated from this carbon, any uh, means from one uh, carbon one to carbon two, it will give you the most stable carbocation, and a three degree carbocation. Later, the water molecule attack as a nucleophile to give you this, the major product, and the uh, proton will be captured by the other water molecule to regenerate the catalyst. Okay. If we want uh, un rearranged product, means there is uh, no rearrangement required. We use basically another reaction which is known as the oxymercuration demercuration. Actually, this reaction is formed uh, without the formation of the carbocation. I'm not discussing here the mechanism, just see what happened in this case. The alkene first converted into the uh, uh, this intermediate in which the OH comes from the water molecule and the mercuric acetate attack at the other carbon to give you this mercuric. This, that is the reason it, this step is known as the oxymercuration. Later, the sodium borohydride in strong basic condition to ultimately remove this mercuric acetate as a mercury and the acetic acid to give you the corresponding alcohol. Okay, this uh, uh, oxymercuration, demercuration also highly reduce selective and follows the Markovnikov rule. For example, one more example, we have two methylpropvanine. The first case, the oxymercuration, here we have the OH and we have the HGOC, which is basically demercurate in presence of the sodium borohydride under basic condition to yield this alcohol. Uh, there is a very seldom rearrangement occur in this reaction because uh, in acid catalyzed, we have already seen that it generally leads towards the rearrangement. And uh, it is because of the more stable carbocation formation in acid catalyzed hydration. While uh, once we are talking about the oxymercuration, demercuration, there is no free intermediate form. That is the reason that we can say that oxymercuration, demercuration generally give the high yield of the product without rearrangement. Okay, uh, next example we have the alcohols. From alkenes through the hydroboration oxidation, the greatest advantage of this reaction is because we have the anti marconic of product. Generally, we use uh, boron or yeah, BH3 as a reagent to give you uh, this intermediate, which ultimately leads toward the trialkyl borane. Later, you can see here the addition of HBH2 across a double bond. Is basically uh, the boron is uh, exit as a dimer uh, B two H six or the complex with the coordinative uh, coordinative solvent like uh, 
tetrahydrofurane or dimethyl sulfide. This reaction is basically uh, a highly stereospecific and generally favors the syn addition. Means, for example, uh, double bond when break, the less hindered side will give you the alcohol and the hydrogen on both sides. When we compare the oxymercuration, demercuration, you can see here we have the anti diol. Uh, while in uh, hydroboration oxidation, we have the syndiol. This is the main difference between the oxymercuration and demercuration. That uh, one difference is that oxymercuration, demercuration is follows the Marconi Gov addition. And uh, uh, while hydroboration oxidation follows basically the, the Marco and anti Marconi Gov addition, and other difference between these two reactions that the hydroboration oxidation is basically uh, give you the syn addition, while oxymercuration demercuration gives you the anti addition. Okay, as we have discussed already, the strict chemistry of hydroboration is uh, generally favored the syn addition. Overall, Synthetic process in hydroboration oxidation uh, consists of three steps. First one, the hydroboration, then oxidation, and the third one is hydrolysis. Now, BH3 is basically used as hydroboration, while H2O2 means hydrogen peroxide used for the oxidation step, and base used for the hydrolysis. And uh, it is uh, already discussed that opposite to the oxymercuration demercuration. Some more example. In this case, you can see here we have a cyclopentene um, derivative of uh, having the methyl group at carbon one, and we have this uh, substituted product in which the boron is attached. And the next case, when it is uh, basically oxidized H2O2 under basic condition to give you the, the syn diode. And we have the retention of the configuration in this case. Now, here in this slide, I'm just comparing the three reactions, that is the acid catalyzed hydration of alcohol and the hydroboration oxidation and the oxymercuration demercuration with the same substrate. Here we have the three methyl but one in in presence of the acid catalyzed hydration you can see here we have this product with rearrangement why because uh, initially when uh, proton being added from the water at this carbon we have the the secondary carbocation which generally shifted to give you the th three degree carbocation then a water molecule serve as a nucleophile to ultimately give you this product after the rearrangement. But once we use the oxymercuration, demercuration step, there is no rearrangement and H and OH will be added across the double bond as described by the Marconi valve without rearrangement. While once we are using the uh, hydroboration oxidation step, Will give you the anti Marconi Gov product instead of uh, we can see here the structure we have CH2 here uh, that the OH will be added where we have more hydrogen because this is the anti Marconi Gov product while H will be added where we have the less hydrogen. This is basically opposite to the of the mercuration demercuration. In both cases, we do not have the rearrangement, but in some uh, very small cases have been observed that the of the mercuration demercuration have has the rearrangement, but very seldom. This is the summary of the reaction. You can see here when we compare the uh, these three reaction of formation of alcohol, that acid catalyzed hydrogen and uh, follow the Marconi of physical chemistry. Stereo chemistry is not controlled, and the rearrangement occur frequently. While oxymercuration demercuration follow the Marconi of addition. Stereo chemistry not controlled and uh, rearrangement occur very seldom. And hydroboration, oxidation, uh, follow the anti marconic of addition and stereospecific uh, stereochemistry, and it follows the same addition of the H and OH, and uh, rearrangement occur very seldom. And that's all 
for this part and hopefully uh, in the second part, I will discuss the remaining reaction of the alkene.